Okay, so I like to use the Fundamental Cotton. It's 100% mercenized cotton. It is weight four. I got this one from Hobby Lobby, but they have other um, brands of mercenized cotton. I just like this one because it has a little bit of shine to it versus normal cotton does not. Um, so I place my eyes in the same spot that you would place the safety eyes um, that the pattern listed. Um, and I choose where I'm gonna go. And then I go from a few stitches below, beside, wherever. Um, and I go in that way I can just focus on around that stitch with that yarn so I'm just gonna go around a stitch and then for this one I chose a whole stitch you can do a half a stitch you can do one and a half stitches I just thought that size would work well for this pattern um, and you just want to go around the same stitch that you originally did and you just want to go very slow um, and kind of place your yarn where you want it to go. As you can see, I'm kind of using my finger to guide it. Um, that piece I actually put in the middle. And then I'm going to wrap it around each side and kind of make it curve. So you can see I'm kind of just very gently placing it um, and just taking my time. Now I'm going to do the other side. And with this, this is tweed yarn, so little pieces of the tweed was trying to poke through. So that's what I was just fixing there. Um, some polyfill will come out, so you just want to pull those out um, once you get the eye adjusted. Um, and what I like to do is kind of do one eye how I think it'll look good and not tie it off quite yet because you want the eyes to be even. So I, kind of, I pull this strand out of the way and make sure you leave a good enough tail where if you do need to add a few more stitches you can do that um, and then we're going to do the second eye the same way so once again you're just going to go in from a stitch a few stitches away and i'm just getting off more polyfill and i'm just counting it said about eight or nine stitches apart between rows five and six. So I lined the other one up with the top of the comb. So I'm just counting based off the comb. Um, that way I don't know it'll look good. Um, and then here I am. This time I'm going from the side. It really doesn't matter where you're going from. It just is easier if you don't go in initially around the stitch you want to do it on. So I'm just verifying, trying to get it as even as possible. There has been times where I have to redo these several times, but I think I'm getting a little bit better. This time I did get it on my first try, spoiler alert. Um, so pretty proud of myself. Um, this side was a little bit more tricky because um, on most um, plushies and loveys, they have a, they're kind of spiraled. So row, if I went in the same stitch on both sides, it kind of would be off center just slightly because it naturally spirals. Um, since it's not like, since it's a continuous round and you don't, you know, um, chain and slip stitch to close with each round, it's not a perfect circle. So you kind of have to play with this one. This one, I think I went around actually one half of two different stitches. So kind of between a stitch, um, you just want to make sure that they're the same size. And I like how they look. I feel like they look pretty even. Um, but yeah, just take your time whenever you're doing it. Just make sure you're gently placing those stitches down or that yarn down so you can kind of mold the eye in the shape that you want. If you just kind of do it all willy nilly, the, it just doesn't look as clean. So now I'm going to take a white yarn and make a highlight on the eye and then I like to, for some of mine, put a white outline around the half of the eye. You'll see here. Um, so the same thing, you want to go around. You don't want to do it directly around the stitch initially. Like, you don't want to go in from right next to the stitch. So I'm just going a little bit over here. And then I'm going to find the top of the eye. And I'm just going to do basically the same thing as if I'm, like, using the black. Um... And as you can see here, I'm trying to feed it in and do the highlight all in one go, but it just didn't work. Um, sometimes I can get it to work, but it's a lot of manipulating. Um, so I actually will end up pulling that out here. As you can see, I, it just really ended up making the eye look really wonky. 
So I end up pulling it out and I'm going to do the highlight around the eye and feed up or come out of a stitch above it and then restart to give that little highlight within the eye as you will see here. So yep, I'm going up above just so you can pull it even without having to like, you could see how when I tried to do it the other way, I really had to turn my needle and it just didn't work well. So here I just went back in and on this one I chose to go around two stitches. You can go around one stitch, two stitch, three stitches, just as long as you go around one. Otherwise, if you don't go around any, it's just going to pull right through. So that's how I do the highlight part on the eye. And just cut it off. And once again, I don't tie off until I have both eyes completed and they look how I want them to look. So once again, I'm going in from a few stitches over, up to the top of the eye, down around the bottom of the eye, and like you just make sure it curves. And here I am smarter this time and I just went above and then I'll feed it back through and I'm trying to make it even with the other eye. So the other eye, I went around two stitches. So I wanna make sure I do that again. And on this particular lovey, I did five strands of black. Sometimes I do five, sometimes I do four, six, whatever I am feeling that day that I think looks good. So just try and keep it even if your black yarn is nice and flat and basically in a row you're able to match up the white parts of the eyes. So after I do this, I actually like to add glue because if I were to come or a child were to come and pull on the eyes, it would potentially pull out the strands. The white part is pretty secure, but those black parts of the eye can lose like it'll pull loose, so we don't wanna do that. So I actually ended up not liking the white on this particular lovey, so I ended up pulling it out and just went straight with the black. I don't know what it was, I just didn't didn't like it. So we went with just plain black eyes on this one. And what I do is I typically just pull the eye apart very, very carefully so you don't mess up your hard earned work. Um, and put a little glue between the stitches, basically so it'll go under. And it doesn't take a lot. Um, and this is just a super glue from Dollar Tree. You can use any super glue. I just have gravitated towards this one because it has a very fine tip. Um, so it's easy to get between those stitches. And it just takes a little amount. And just make sure you're gentle with it. That way it doesn't get on top of the eye because if it gets on top, then it's going to get all hard and crunchy and we don't want that. And it will affect the way it looks. You'll be able to tell that glue has dried on the yarn. So, um, and then here you can see a tiny piece of the tweed trying to poke through. So since it is super glue, we want to make sure that there is no fuzz coming through because that will be permanent. So same thing on this side. Make sure you don't have any of the polyfill peeking through. And I actually am hoping that this eye turns out okay. I didn't realize when I turned the glue over, it had already had a drop on the top. So hopefully this one is not ruined. Um, but yeah, just put a couple drops and then mold that eye. And you can actually probably mold it a little bit. Once again, something else is poking through. Um, you can really mold it into a circular shape with that little bit of glue because it will stay. Um, so yeah, this is how I do a lot of my, or all of my eyes for my loveys and for my bigger plushies. I will show you how I do my small eyes um, coming up next in the video. And I will have another example of me embroidering eyes on another plushie. Um, that one, I think I will just do with music. I don't know. I may talk, do a voiceover explaining what I'm doing. I do that one. I will do a mouth on that one as well. So I can show you how I do that. Um, but yeah, I just tie off in a knot and then shove it in there with scissors. 
I did try to speed up this video by doubling the speed of the clips, but then I could not talk fast enough to explain what I was doing. So I want to make sure it's thorough and you can actually see what I'm doing and it's not too fast. So hopefully this was a okay embroidery tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, I will have another example here next. Okay, so this is editing Emily here. You just saw me and border the eyes on um, the chicken. Um, the next one I'm going to border on is uh, Pete the pumpkin, and that's what I, I brought that to my market um, a couple weeks ago. So that uh, footage is old. Um, I just haven't shared it yet because I wanted to have multiple options in this video. Um, I will apologize. This video is long. I don't know how to make short videos, apparently. Um, but I do want to explain, um, and I kind of will show you on this little guy here. Um, so when I did the chicken, I embroidered on the eyes this way and I went around a stitch sideways. Now on Pete the pumpkin, it is, um, right side up. So I actually embroider around a stitch from here to here, basically. Um, so you really can do it either way, what kind, whatever way the item is facing. So if this were a head or something, for example, and it was, you know, done like this, um, I embroider the eyes this way. And then if it's a head facing this way and your stitches line up, you know, up and down, I embroider the eyes this way. So um, you can kind of do it either way, whichever way the head is facing. I just don't want you to get stuck on you know, you're like, oh my gosh, what if my eyes are facing or my stitches are facing the other way? So um, now if you your stitches are facing this way and you want a big eye, you can just go around multiple stitches or go around, you know, a stitch and a half and get in between that V there. So um, with embroidery, you really can do whatever you want. Um, as long as you pick two spots and go in that same spot over and over and over again, it'll be fine. Okay. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much uh, for watching my videos. Um, we are at, I think, like 860 or something when I'm recording this. Um, so that's, it's, it's insane. Um, the growth has been way faster than I ever thought. Um, I'm trying to pump out content. Um, I got super sick last week with bronchitis, so that kind of put a damper on this. And this video is later than I wanted. Um, but I have two more markets coming up this month, so we will have some videos about that. Um, but yeah, so stay tuned and I will show you how I embroider the eyes on Pete the Pumpkin. And that one I actually did not do a voiceover. I talked during the that actual embroidery and I re-listened to it and it's it seems pretty thorough. So I'm just leaving that footage and it is not sped up as well. So um, if you want to watch it, watch it. If you want the help. If not, you don't need the help, then that's okay. Skip on past. Um, I will also show at the end of the video how I do these little tiny eyes for my smaller things. And I use these, you can see literally everything back there are these little tiny eyes. So stay tuned and I will show you how I do those as well. So I think I'm going to go, so with embroidering, you go around a stitch and that's usually about how big the eyes are. Um, so if I just went around from here to here, they'd be pretty small. And in her pattern, she has the eyes really big and I like that. So we're going to try and mimic that. Um, so to have six stitches, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if I go here. And here, that'll put me one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one stitch-ish from the arm. Hmm. So, when I go to embroider, I go in from the side, and I put where I want the bottom of the eye to go, and then I am going to go above the V here because I want the eyes a little bigger. So it's kind of over this whole entire stitch. You, if you wanted it smaller, you could kind of go over just where that, you went through those both loops in the round before. But this one, I'm gonna go over the whole entire V. So this is this stitch's loops that I crocheted in, into row 10, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna go around those and it kind of gives me a nice, 
hole to go in. And sometimes it can be hard because your where you went may not be directly above it. So sometimes you just gotta play with it. That's embroidery can be very frustrating because I rarely get it right the first time. I'll be honest, unless I'm doing just the tiny little dots, which I will show you in a minute. Those are a lot easier, but even still, I've never done safety eyes, so I don't have anything to compare it to. But what I like to do is just go nice and slow and place that yarn where I want it to go. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I have a good angle here. Um, so I did one over here, now I'm gonna go one over here, and you can kind of just place it where you want it. So now I'm gonna go back on this side, and I try to just go back and forth to keep the eye even. And I typically add a white highlight, which I will show you, and I feel like it gives a lot of character. Now be careful with that starting yarn not to tug on it, because it will tug that stitch and then it'll throw everything off. So you kind of want to keep the same tension with how much you're pulling the stitches and how tight the stitches are. So just take it nice and slow. And I mean, he's going to have... I don't know if I'm gonna love these big eyes on him. So I'm gonna stop there and do the other one and see. And then when I am done with that, when I think I'm good, I go back out the same hole because when I'm done, I will not here and stuff it in. So just make sure that you can't really see that. There we go. We tuck that in there. So now I'm gonna cut off. Now, if that yarn that I pulled through that I was just using is very short, I make sure to cut the tail, the other side, longer. So if I need to add a round or two, I can go back and do that. So this is enough length here to go add maybe twice more if I needed to make it even with the other eye. So I kind of just do that as a little cautionary measure. So I honestly, I mean, I, I'm only one eye in. I am not loving these, this eye. Now I do feel like sometimes you are limited and the eyes, I don't know, I see people's eyes and they look way cuter because they could use sparkly ones or, you know, different colored ones. So um, spacing wise, I have like half a stitch here or it's just kind of squished. And then two stitches, so squished, two stitches. So we wanna go in about right here, because that is in the same line. So I'm gonna come in from this side and go up. I'm gonna go up one more, crazy. There we go. Up, and then I went over to this row. See, this one is kind of a little tough, I feel like. It's at a little bit of an angle. Hopefully we can work with that. And in the pattern, she said, I think six stitches apart. So this will put us one, two, three, four, five. So we'll see how it looks. And don't always follow to a T. Like when you're on bordering eyes, the shape and the size can vary greatly, especially I have no idea how to, what like sizes for safety eyes are. Like, I don't know what any of that means, so I can't tell you. I kind of just do what looks good. If it shows a big eyes in the pattern and I like the way that looks, then you kind of go over one and a half stitches. But, so just continue to go slow, alternate, so you can get that round shape. And don't worry about the polyfill because you can pick that up at the end. So this, I, as you can see right now, like if I were to go over to this side, it's going to kind of give that loop. So I'm going to go to this side again, and then I'm just going to make sure that I come out over on this side of those loops. Because I had messed that up. So now I just made to do, may need to do two in a row. 
Now this is supposed to be a pumpkin, so the big black eyes, I mean, are fitting. So, I don't know, he just doesn't look very cute with these big old eyes. So, let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So, let's do one more on this side. And then we're going to go out down here. Ooh, I almost lost it there. And then just continue to go slow. And then you see how you can see a little bit of stitch right here. I just try and hide that so I go under my orange stitches and kind of pull up around it and kind of truck, tuck down. So this is what you can kind of get a visual. I don't know, he doesn't look that cute. Okay, so I have my white here. And so for eyes like this, you can do, I feel like for the Frankies, I normally did kind of like a diagonal white. You can go up and down. Um, I'm going to try a diagonal and see how that looks. And sometimes I end up changing it. So I'm just going to go over. I'm going to try to aim for this third stitch here. Now sometimes it is not easy. So I have this third stitch over, and then I'm going to pull my tail pretty short. I just need enough to knot it so it doesn't have to be too long. And then I'm going to come across, I'm going to do three stitches and kind of come down here. So you kind of get a, you got to get around a stitch so that way you don't pull it through. Oops, let's move that out the way. Because if you don't go around a stitch, it'll just hide under the black. So you kind of got to go around the stitches. And sometimes I use a little glue to hold it all in. I just use some super glue. I don't know. I don't love that. I think it's too diagonal. So let's pull out this side. I like the bottom. And let's try and fix this. Let's just go over to and then I'll kind of give it more an up and down look. And then once again, you can take your yard needle and pull around the stitches. I don't know. I don't love these eyes. I think I'm gonna have to go look at some inspo and come back. Now, <clears throat> you can cut off the white and tie it here. Um, but I'm going to just use the same. Now it can be kind of hard because your yard needle is not very long. Oop. And I went over, it looks like two. So you just want to kind of make it look the same. And I'm going to come up up here. Oop. Let's give him a mouth and see what that does. Okay, for the mouth, I'm going to use three stitches here. So we're going to go these one, one, two, three. And go in between this one here. And then we're going to go over. And then we're going to go down in the middle. And then you loop your yarn over. And your 
basically going to go back in that same hole with your yarn and pull it tight so you can't see where you just went. And then there you have it. And then you go find somebody to look at it and say, hey, does this look okay? Because that's what I do to my poor husband every time. And he's like, I don't know crochet, but I do it every time. So let's go get his opinion and see what he thinks. Now that he has the mouth on there, he is a little cuter. I will say that. Okay, so after putting on the mouth, I think he, I think he's cute. So, and husband thinks he's cute. So, we will leave him the way it is. So, I just take Burnett Blanket. Because it's a little sturdier than Parfait Chunky. And I just take a piece about this long. So, I don't know, what is that? Three inches? Oh, I got glue everywhere, sorry. Two inches? I don't know, you don't need that long. And you just tie a knot. And this is going to be your eye. So that's how big it's going to be. Sorry. I got yarn now from the glue. So I just loop around a stitch. So I don't even remember where the eyes are supposed to be. I mean, it's just a ghost. So I'm going to put them somewhere. Um, and this is velvet yarn. So it's a lot thinner than I, what I typically use. I just bought some velvet yarn to make ghosts so they'd be soft. I literally only have white velvet. So you just go around a stitch and you can see right now how you don't have just that knot hanging out. You have a little bit coming to the side. So what you want to do is pull it tight and see. You may have to adjust it. So that looks okay. And honestly, these may be too big for these velvet ghosts. These are the first two I made of this size. So, and then you would just put it wherever they say to put the safety eyes. Um, typically, I don't know because I don't feel like undoing my phone from the contraption it's in and looking. So we're just going to put them somewhere. It's a ghost, so it's not like, got to be that intricate. So go around a stitch for both eyes. And we will see if we like it. I think those are a little wonky, so that doesn't look good. So we're just going to pull it out. So let's try again. <laughs> my dog's doing something. Oh, he's eating one of my son's toys. I hear my husband saying, no, no, no. <laughs> one of my dogs likes to play at night and he grabs all my son's toys or my son's little stuffed animals and stuff poor little bluey and bingo stuffed animals have had way too much abuse after hours from my dog we take it from him but sometimes he gets it and we don't see okay so it looks pretty good they're kind of big but i don't know i think it's okay for a ghost so i just flip it inside out and tie around it we're gonna tie around this one and you just tie it nice and tight and if you can do it before you stuff that is so much better because you can get it nice and tight so when you go to pull on it there's nowhere for it to go versus this one doing it after the fact you can't really tie it tight now if you could border eyes like this before you stuff it then you can tie it tight and you wouldn't need that glue. But since I'm having to put the yarn tails over here and tie a knot, it makes it loose. If that makes any sense. You have slack underneath where the stuffing is at. So if that makes any sense at all. So that is what I do. I think I may add a little blush. I'm not going to stuff it or anything yet. But I'm probably giving a little blush. Maybe I'll give him a little derpy smile. I don't know. We'll see. Um... But yeah, I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I may use a different um, size yarn and just have options of eyes and see what people buy. But yeah, that's how I do my eyes here. 
And then I did the same little dot ones on this chicken here. The chicken's not done, so it looks a little goofy. But the same thing, the little dot on here. Um, and then this little guy, I did that. This is, I'm kind of modifying a pattern. But thanks for watching. Um, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Um, I am in no way no expert, so I am learning new tips and tricks every day. If you have any tips or tricks you want to share with me and others who watch my videos, please comment them below. Um, sharing is caring. So we all are on a team. We don't have to compete with each other. So please let us know what tips you have. Um, but yeah, if you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye!